Welcome to Frank Mac Now. The Register in the UK reports that Apple has elevated longtime director Arthur Levinson to chairman of its board. Levinson, who is also the chairman of biotech firm Genetech, has been one of Apple's co lead directors since 2005. He started out as a research scientist for Genetech in 1980, according to an Apple statement. Apple has also strengthened its ties with entertainment powerhouse Disney by electing its president and CEO Robert Iger onto the board. Disney, home of Mickey Mouse and Goofy, already had strong ties through Steve Jobs, who was a board member and its largest shareholder after he sold Pixar Animation to the company in 2006. Hooking up with Disney is also a good move for Apple if it's serious about the rumored Apple TV. Disney CEO Bob Iger's strategic vision for Disney is based on three fundamentals, generating the best creative content possible, fostering innovation, and utilizing the latest technology and expanding into new markets around the world, which makes him a great fit for Apple, CEO Tim Cook said in a release statement. According to O'Grady's Power Page and Apple Insider, Apple began widespread testing of macOS 10 10.7.3 this past Tuesday. The third maintenance update to Lion will reportedly improve upon iCloud's Documents in the Cloud feature, among a handful of other areas. Sources familiar with the first external build of the forthcoming update, labeled Build 11D16, say the company has requested developers to focus their evaluation efforts on iCal calendars, mail, address book, and iCloud's document storage. The 633 megabyte Delta update is reported to have no known issues at this time. It was accompanied by a pre-release copy of OS X Lion Server 10.7.3 that carried the same build number and set of focus points. It was only this past October when Apple released Mac OS 10.7.2, which delivered initial Mac support for iCloud. Now who'd have thunk it? Slash Gear says that Steve Jobs explored establishing Apple as a Wi-Fi based carrier rival, wireless expert John Stanton has confirmed. He reported that he and Jobs quote, spent a lot of time talking about whether synthetically you could create a carrier using Wi-Fi spectrum, end quote. That plan, Stanton says, was originally part of Jobs' vision for the iPhone, though the CEO subsequently shifted focus after 2007. It's not the first time people have heard of Apple looking to marginalize or bypass carriers, as it did recently with the company's iMessage launch, which replaces SMS and MMS messaging on iOS 5 devices with a web-based alternative. That supposedly blindsided operator partners. But the networks haven't taken Apple's attempts lying down. Rumored plans to use an embedded SIM in future iPhone models that would allow Apple to directly activate the smartphone for consumers and then switch them between networks with little to no contact with the actual carriers themselves were supposedly junked after operators revolted. Nonetheless, Apple's iPhone has arguably led the way in pushing data-centric services, a pattern which has been continued by Android, Windows Phone, and other platforms. Carriers have responded with 4G network investment, and many offer bundled Wi-Fi hotspot access to try to offload traffic from their spectrums. And you thought being a crack addict was living on the edge? Try being Amish. Steubenville, Ohio. The beard cutting attacks in this breakaway Amish community continued Wednesday when an elderly Amish man was assaulted by his own son. Hair cutting attacks are a sensitive issue in the Amish community. Many Amish believe the Bible instructs men to grow beards and stop shaving once they marry. The latest incident occurred after the victim traveled from Ashland County in response to an invitation from his son to reunite. The victim, in his 70s, went to his son's home and the two talked, after which his son attacked him and with the help of his grandchildren allegedly managed to wrestle the elderly man to the ground. The man's wife tried to help her husband, but her daughter-in-law held her back. The beard-cutting attacks are connected to Sam Mullet, 
the leader of the breakaway Amish group. The group has differences with other bishops over the handling of church matters. Mullet told the Associated Press last month that the haircutting was in response to other bishops criticizing his leadership. So today I ask you to join with me in beginning a new movement, OSO, Occupy Steubenville, Ohio. Hello, it's me. Uh, I am this week's op-ed guest. It is my show after all. This week I thought we'd talk about um, something I was listening to. I was listening to one of Chuck Joyner's shows the other day when I was driving around. Uh, and they had a panel talking about the future of Apple TV. And they were debating, you know, are they just going to upgrade the streaming services? Or are they going to, you know, make a full panel deal with the, you know, Apple TV in it? And I think everybody was overlooking what seems to me, at least from my experience over years of working in video and AV, uh, is an obvious thing. And that is, no one thought of, why not have Apple make video projectors? Think of it. The, the quality of video projection has gotten amazing. Uh, in the early days when I used to do it, when dinosaurs roamed freely about the earth, um, you, you really had to sit down for hours and tweak things. You had to work on the keystones for each colored gun. You had to match up graph panels and all that stuff. None of that's done now. It's all done automatically. And what I'm saying is you could sell a projector at the right price point, probably for twelve or thirteen hundred bucks, shoot at the wall, make it the size any size you want it to be. Um, you could put a, a USB two port, a USB three port, and an HDMI port to run the sound to whatever system you want. The only thing they would have to work out is some kind of system that would gauge the color of the wall. All right, take it back and then calculate what it has to do to get a correct white balance so that your colors render properly. But I think that may be the thing to do because you could just carry that sucker around. And at twelve hundred bucks, I mean, it's it's like buying an entry level MacBook Air. All right, well, this is uh, as you can see done at the last minute and um, in the bathroom of my apartment doing this. But we're doing it on my new iPhone 4S. So, next week we're not going to have any show because it's Thanksgiving. I'm the turkey next week, okay? So, have a happy holiday, and we'll catch you later. And that be it for this week in the Magic Apple Kingdom, boys and girls. This week I finally, it's only been what, a year, I guess? I started up our own little Twitter feed, at YMP Now. And I've also put on there a lot of the people you want to hear from, like Chris Breen, Don McAllister, Jason Schnell, Jim Dalrymple, uh, Lucille Ball, Desi Arnaz, just name, you know, just to name a few. So anyhow, come on over, sign up, and uh, argue with us, or just bring up things you want to talk about, or uh, tell me to take a flyer. I want to thank this week's op-ed guest, by the way, me. So until next time, remember, download, double click, drop out.